back for chapter three now is the time the fall of man doesn't take long in the bible for us to get to this part <laughs> unfortunately it doesn't take us long to get to this part um again that was my friend jack's vibes singing her link will be in the description below she does the opener for this she does an awesome job if i do say so myself so go pick her up Show her some love. So we are going to do chapter three. Yes. But before we get into it, let's, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for giving us your word so that we may learn the things you need us to learn. And it teaches us how to live the life that you want us to live. Um, thank you always for sending your son to die on the cross for us. That no matter who we are, what we've done. As long as we believe in him, since he rose again on the third day, conquering both sin and death, that 
who shall who shall soever believeth in him shall not perish but shall have everlasting life and uh please give us discernment and understanding as we read through the, your word help me to say the things you want me to say and help the people learn the things that you want them to learn in jesus name i ask it amen amen all right so chapter three so first two chapters we went through creation created and then created man and woman and they were the first marriage and they became one flesh and now we're gonna fall <laughs> and it don't take us long we're three chapters in and we're gonna mess it up already all right chapter three now the serpent was more Subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Now, the word serpent um, comes from the word nakash. Uh, it means the shining one. And uh, subtle here. Um, that actually comes from, I can't hardly read my writing, it comes from the word abrum, which means wise, full of wisdom, a prudent. So pretty much uh, the serpent, when he say he was more subtle, means he was more wise uh, than any other beast of the field. And, uh, you know, right away, the first thing he does is he starts bringing doubt. Is Hath God not said, thou shalt not eat of every tree in the garden? And the, and the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat. Oh, I forgot to. <laughs> forgot to do this. All right. There we go. <laughs> we'll start again. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the, but of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God had said, Ye shall not eat of it, Neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And right away, Eve messed up. God never said anything about not touching it. So her first mistake right there, and the mistake of many people, is she added to the word of God. And a lot of people do that. That's how we get a lot of these works-based uh, salvations. People add to the word of God. I never once see in the Bible to earn your salvation, you have to work for it. Um, Jesus did all the work for us on the cross. But there's not one thing you can do to get yourself to heaven. There ain't enough good works you could ever do. There ain't enough money in this world to buy your way there. You can't add or take away from the word of God. But... Four. <clears throat> and the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And pretty much every false cult that has ever come along, that's the basis of the cult. Um, where you're a god, um, you will find some sort of enlightenment. Uh, you'll know things that others don't. Um, yeah, and you're a god. Uh, that's, you know, the basis of pretty much every false cult. Um, Satan himself. 
fell because he wanted to be God. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat. Um, I like how it points out here that she saw the tree and it was pleasant to the eyes. A little Bible study that uh, you might want to do is uh, uh, eyes versus the ears. You know, it's not always, but a lot of times in the Bible, you know, Satan gets you by your eyes and God gets you by your ears. He that have an ear, let him hear. You know, faith cometh by hearing. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Your eyes always get you in trouble. Get you looking where you shouldn't have gone. But a few things I want to point out here. Um, <clears throat> she ate first, but and she gave it to her husband with her, and he did eat. Uh, Adam is going to die for his wife. That's pretty much it. Adam didn't have to eat the fruit. He, he heard it straight from God. As I pointed out in uh, chapter 2, Eve didn't hear it straight from God. She heard it from Adam. God told Adam not to eat from it or else you shall surely die. And then he relayed, them, relayed it on to Eve. So Adam was way more at fault than Eve was in this. And uh, he did not have to eat. But he did it because he loved his wife. And we're going to point it out. For one, just like Jesus died on the cross for his bride, the church. Because he loved us so much. Adam was a picture of Jesus. We're going to find that in Romans chapter 5, verse 14. Nevertheless, death resigned from Adam to Moses, even more, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, which is the figure of him that was to come. Adam was a figure of Jesus Christ. Tells us right there. And there was only two people in the Bible that were ever called sons of God. Jesus, of course, was called the son of God. And Adam, in Luke chapter 3, verse 38, which was, because they go through all the sons here. But which was the son of Enos, which was the son of Seth, which was the son of Adam, which was the son of God. Adam was formed and breathed into by God. After that, everybody else is a son of Adam. We're going to get into the genealogy a little later, I think chapter 5. But uh, So Adam was called the son of God. Only him and Jesus were ever called the son of God. And Adam was not deceived. So Eve was deceived by the snake. Adam was not deceived. This is 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 14. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. So one of the things I like to point out here... 
is Adam was in way more fault than Eve was. So Adam heard this straight from God. Eve didn't. Adam was the son of God. But so truthfully, God could have just destroyed Eve and got him a new wife easily. If Adam would have said no right here to his wife and she was the only one that ate, Adam, God could have destroyed Eve and made Adam a new wife. I mean, like that. But since he loved her so much, he chose to die with her. He chose to take her sin on with him and to die with her. Yeah. Just as Jesus became sin for us and died for us. But unlike Adam, Jesus was able to conquer both sin and death. And so unlike Adam who brought death into the world, Jesus brought life. But seven, and the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. And they heard a voice, heard, and they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, and I hid myself. God always has to seek for us. <laughs> We're always hiding in the trees. Um, go to John 15, John chapter 15, verse 16. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and ordained you that you that ye should go and bring forth fruit, that and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. God chose us. We didn't choose him. Just as God had to seek out Adam. After Adam sinned, yeah. God, when we're sinners, God has to seek us out. Yeah. Nowadays, he's different. Nowadays, he'll seek us out with the Holy, Holy Spirit. And when you feel the Holy Spirit, that's him trying to get you saved. And you should probably listen. And he said, Who told thee that thou wast naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. I love uh, how he says, This woman here that you gave me, I didn't give. I didn't make her. You gave her to me. She did it. <laughs> Biggest thing I could take out of this: take responsibility when you mess up. I said she was deceived. He wasn't. He knew better, way better than she did. When you mess up, take responsibility for your mess ups. None of this pointing the finger, but she's going to do the same thing. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. <clears throat> and the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field. 
Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. And right there is the prophecy, first prophecy of Jesus. Jesus has to come from the seed of the woman. And the Antichrist will come from the seed of the serpent. First prophecy of Jesus right there. Right now. Let's write that down. 3.15. Genesis 3.15. First prophecy. So now we get the curse of the woman. Unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire, desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. So women, you want to know why you have periods and they hurt? Because he has greatly multiplied thy sour and thy conception. What happens when you have your monthly visitor? You get a new egg. All that stuff. We're not going to get into exactly what happens. That's why you have it. Because that's all part of the conception. And then obviously bringing forth the child. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children. And that's why pregnancy is terrible. <laughs> and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. Well, that's the way it's supposed to be. <laughs> uh, now we're going to get from 17 to 19, the curse of the man. And unto Adam he said, because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife and hast eaten of the tree of which I command thee saying thou shalt not eat of it cursed is the ground for thy sake in sorrow shalt thou eat of it all thy days of thy life thorns also and thistles shall bring it forth to thee and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground. For out of it wast thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. And we already talked about that in the last chapter, that... Every element that makes up our body, you can find in the dirt you walk on every day. Now, I do like want to point out this part right here. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. It didn't say cursed is the ground to make your life miserable. He said it's for thy sake. Now, according to the Bible, technically, as men... We should work at least six 12-hour days, and then on the Sabbath day or whatever day, we should rest. That's biblical, 100% biblical. A man should work six out of 12 day, or six out of seven days, and he should work at least 12 days. And reason it is for our sake that we should do that, it's a lot of hard, it's hard to get into trouble. If you're working 12 hours a day, with only one day off a week. And then that day is supposed to be to worshiping God and, you know, hanging out with your family and just relaxing. You know, if you're working six 12 hour days, you go to work for those six, you go to work for 12 hours, you come home for supper, you eat, hang out with your family for a little bit, and then you go to bed. It's hard to get in trouble when you live a life like that. You know, and that's why it was for our sake. 
because we are already into sin at this point, and he knew, God knew, we got too much time on our hands. That's when we start messing up and doing wrong things. So uh, we'll get into the six 12-hour days later. All right. And Adam called his wife's name Eve. And you notice that he just finally called her? Yeah. Because she was the mother of all living. That's what Eve means. Unto Adam also and to his wife did the Lord make coats of skins and clothe them. And I like to point that out. Verse 21. He gave them coats of skin. God had to shed blood to cover them. Just a little a quick point there. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us. And again, that's God bringing forth that... Uh, uh, there's more than he... God himself is made up of more than one. It's another little to it's another peek into the uh, Trinity, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Because who else is he talking to? He's talking to himself. But himself is made up of three. Again, how that works. But God is more infinite than us. We just have little stupid man brains. And <laughs> we're not meant to understand it. But, and the Lord said, and the Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us to know good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. So pretty much God couldn't let us eat from the tree of life at all anymore because if we lived forever, we would forever live in our sins. So we had to die. We had no choice. And God also had to live to his word. He said, told Adam, as soon as you eat from that tree, you're going to die. Um, so Adam started decaying from that point on. Um, he would have lived forever if he, they would have stayed sinless. They would have both lived forever, never aging a minute. But as soon as he took from that tree, his body started to wither away. Now you're going to see before the flood, people live a lot longer than after the flood. But things were different. Things were different before the flood. Kind of covered that last time. But we'll talk about it more when the flood comes. Therefore, the Lord God sent him forth from the Garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. So he drove out the man and he placed at the east of the Garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree, to keep the way of the tree of life. So, why would God need to put, you know, cherubims? Not just one. He put multiple. Because the I am is plural in Hebrew. Cherubim. I don't even know why the S is on there, but it's there because we speak English. But in Hebrew, just the I am itself is... Uh, Plural, so he actually put multiple cherubims to guard the way to Eden, along with a flaming sword that pointed in every direction. Why would he need that to keep Adam out? No, he didn't need to do that to keep Adam out. Just a regular, the lowest angel on the totem pole could have kept Adam out. Could have kept one angel killed, like what was it, 185,000 Syrians in one night. Yeah, just strolled through and killed them all. Yeah. He didn't have to put cherubims. Cherubims are like the highest. Thing. They sit around the throne of God protecting the throne. 
And Lucifer himself, Satan, was the highest of the cherubims. He was actually the leader of the highest of the highest. He's had some... Uh, He's had some problems ever since then. He's been a little demoted. <laughs> His career went in the wrong direction. But uh, obviously the cherubims were sent there to protect the way to the tree of life from Satan himself. Keep a cherubim out. Put a couple of them there to protect him. To, to protect it, to keep him out. He needed to put something there just as strong as he was. And put a couple of them so that they could overpower him easily. Keep him out of there. All right. Next week we get into chapter four, which is the story of Cain and Abel. And then chapter five, which I'm pretty sure is the genealogies. And I like the genealogies. If you all follow the Bible study with me and Eric, Eric B. We do Bible study every Sunday at 1 p.m. Central Time, 2 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, pretty sure that's right. Yeah. But uh, what book was it we did? I can't even remember what book. Went through one of the books where they went through genealogy. I'm trying to think of what book it was. But I went through all the names. <laughs> and I gave the meaning for every name. Yeah. I think I bored most people away. Like, that took like two Sundays to do. <laughs> it was Nehemiah. That was what it was. Nehemiah. Because it was going through the families and all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I went through all the names and gave the name, the Hebrew name, the root words that they came from, and what their names mean. Every single one of them in Nehemiah. Oh, yeah. I about bored everybody to death. But I like genealogy. God put their names in this book for a reason. And, you know, if God put their names in this book, they're pretty important to him. So I think they should be at least important to us so i try to figure them all out and i want to know what they mean all right uh so yeah next week chapter four and then five chapter four story of cain and abel everybody likes to call it the first sin but it wasn't the first sin the first sin was Eve, and actually the sin before that, there was sin before that, because Lucifer sinned. Yeah. So this is not the first sin. A lot of people like to call it the first sin, but it's, it's the first sin after the fall of man that we know of. Adam and Eve definitely probably sinned many times <laughs> before this sin, but it's the first sin accounted for in the Bible. Yeah, but all right. Don't just don't. Never forget Genesis 9 3.